What's up, everybody? Uh, it is good to be back talking with you. Um, today is Holy Saturday. Um, and so over this past 40 days of Lent, I really tried to cleanse myself of social media and um, invest in daily prayer with my church and quiet times. Um, however, I must admit, it, it wasn't easy. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. And, uh, I found that even though I took away distractions, Satan, um, has many more that he can put in my life. Um, many more ways, uh, to distract me from his presence, um, to make me doubt his, uh, his promises for my life. I mean, he just kept throwing stuff in my path to just keep me busy, um, to keep me angry and frustrated and confused. Um, but something that came to mind last night that I think is a huge theme for today of Holy Saturday is that I'm still holding on uh, to faith and I'm waiting in anticipation on the blessings and promises of God. Um, and that really, for me, what is what is what I'm harping on and focusing in on today of Holy Saturday is waiting in anticipation. So I want to walk through some scripture with you today. Um, let us start in Mark 9 verses 30 through 32. Uh, it says, They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were. Because he was teaching his disciples, he said to them, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. In this passage, Jesus tells the disciples what is to come, that he was going to die, which we remembered yesterday on Good Friday, where our sins were taken from us, the debt was paid, and that he will rise on Easter Sunday so that we may have life. However, the disciples did not understand. We skip down to Mark 16. Jesus has been crucified on the cross. He is buried in his tomb. And now Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome went to his tomb. And they saw that the tombstone was rolled away and a man said, do not be afraid, but Jesus is not here. It says in verse eight, trembling and bewildered, the woman went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Eventually they returned and told the disciples and they did not believe. The disciples did not believe when the ladies told them. After all this, after all the disciples have seen Jesus do, after Jesus telling them directly what was to come, they didn't believe that he would rise again after his death. They were not expecting his return. Now we may not be able to see Jesus in the flesh, but we do have the whole story. We can see it unfold and we can say, oh silly disciples, how could you not have believed? However, I caution you to say these things because we too are like the disciples. Scripture tells us many times to be waiting on our God. In Hosea 12, 6, it says, Therefore, return to your God, observe kindness and justice, and wait for God continually. Psalm 27, 14 says, Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. And Jesus also tells us to eagerly and anxiously await his second coming. In Luke 12, 36, he tells us to be like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. In Jude 1, 21, it says, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. And in Philippians 3, 20, but our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Oftentimes we, 
are like the disciples. We forget the promise of Jesus' return. We are caught off guard at his return. If we look back in verse 14 of that same chapter, it says, later Jesus appeared to the 11 as they were eating. They were eating. They were not in anticipation of Jesus' return. They were going through daily motions. But he showed up and he said, he rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Jesus rebukes them. We are not to doubt God's promises. We are not to doubt the work he is doing in our lives. Today on good, um, on Holy Saturday is a day of waiting. Waiting on Jesus' re resurrection, but is also a reflection on how we should live our lives every day. That we should be eagerly waiting in faith for the coming of Jesus. Not only that, but that we do not doubt his promises, that we live in assurance that he is king over all, that he will bless us and protect us. We have a hope that is unwavering because we know our God keeps his covenant with us. We know our God will never leave us nor forsake us. Unlike the disciples, we have the full story laid out for us in scripture. All we need to do is hold on to faith and eagerly await all that God has in store for us. Psalms 145 verse 15 through 16 says, The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due time. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Isaiah 30, 18 says, therefore the, long, therefore the Lord longs to be gracious to you, and therefore he waits on high to have compassion on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. How blessed are all those who long for him. Today is a day of anticipation of Jesus' resurrection. And every day, is a day of anticipation of all the good things you will fill our life with. An anticipation of his second coming where all the brokenness will be restored. Today, remember God's promises and wait on him. Wait on his timing, wait and trust and put your hope in God despite all the things that life will throw at you. Have a good one and have a blessed Easter.